Hi, I'm Jennifer Sir. Welcome to the Sewing Room and our Jobs in Fashion series. Today, I'm talking with my friend Lee Stewart, who is a makeup artist, and we're going to find out all about what being a makeup artist is. I'm really excited for you to meet Lee, and so without further ado, here's Lee Stewart. Hi, Lee. Welcome to the Sewing Room. Hey, Jennifer. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you today about your job of makeup artist. Can you give us a little background um, and how you be about who you are and how you became a makeup artist? Absolutely. Yeah. My name is Lee Stewart. I'm a makeup artist. I started my career in Chicago. Um, and I, you know, I makeup artistry kind of happened by accident. It wasn't something um that I had a passion for. Like, obviously I am millennial, a, a young generation Xer. So we didn't, we didn't have the exposure to, to beauty and, um, you know, tips and tricks and tep trends and techniques the way we do now. We got all of that from glossy magazines. So, I mean, even then it was, we were just coming off like the eighties, um, late eighties to the nineties, which was kind of a repressive era for makeup. So it wasn't like a point of, you know, a tremendous creative outlet or anything like this. I um after college, I thought, what's a nice job for uh, a lady to have? <laughs> and so I got a job at a makeup counter, <laughs> and and it kind of took off from there. Wow. So what do you specialize in now? So I, you know, while I like to think I'm versatile and and my influences are are varied, I um I mostly get hired for like real people, French girl beauty. So I've worked a lot with Wilson Sports, you know, athletes. Um, if I do fashion, it's usually super bare face makeup. Um, not that I don't love glam and wouldn't do glam, but you know, once once people, you get known for a certain thing, you you tend to sort of walk in that direction. Which I've been, you know, it's been great, um, and I I love to see bare faces. So I, you know, for me that that little niche works that's awesome what different kinds of makeup artists are there um so <clears throat> this can kind of be regional i mean there there's many 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 makeup artists um if you're working in new york you're probably doing fashion and beauty um you're probably just a makeup artist you probably don't do hair and makeup you know but if you're in chicago you probably do primarily light what's called lifestyle makeup which is what I do real people makeup and you probably do both hair and makeup because you know just the the it's just a smaller city right so you just kind of get in where you fit in um same thing San Francisco you probably do a lot of professional headshots you probably do um a lot of e-com and again you're probably doing hair and makeup if you're living in Los Angeles you probably do uh FX makeup you probably do a lot of beauty and celebrity. You um, probably work in film and you probably specialize in only makeup. Interesting. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought it was regional, but it makes a lot of sense. It is. Yeah. I, I, it never crossed my mind until I kind of realized, you know, I met some makeup artists who were from New York and they were like, Oh, you do hair too. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I have to, if I want to work and they're like, oh no, no, we stay in our lane. So just depending on where you are, you know, different things are expected. I occasionally get calls where people ask me if I can do um, wardrobe as well. And, you know, I don't want to be a band who plays for beer, right? Like I don't want to do <laughs> hair, makeup, wardrobe, craft services, you know, that's right. I'm, I'm, I'm good with hair and just makeup. That's awesome. Um, how did you learn how to do makeup professionally? So in the U.S., there is no official training program for for makeup artists. Um, there is for hair, as we all know, like people go to hair school. But for makeup, there there isn't any such thing. And you, you sort of learn by doing. Um, and I learned by getting a job at a makeup counter. And most of the makeup artists that people are aware of start at makeup counters in the U.S. It's it's very rare that somebody, you know, as a lay person without any retail beauty experience dives into the makeup artistry world. It happens. I know a few. But by and large, most people, I feel like everyone either started at MAC Clinique or Sephora. 
<laughs> yeah, I think if I was going to go, I'd probably start at Mac. <laughs> yeah, That's my I was point. a Mac girl. Awesome. Yeah, I, I worked at Mac for a period of time. Uh, what are the most important skills to have to be a makeup artist? I think that as a makeup artist, um, being able to interpret what your art directors, what your clients, whoever they are, what it is that they want, being a good listener, um, being easy to work with. I swear I get hired at this point. Like I'm a good enough makeup artist, but I think I get hired because I'm easy to work with. Um, so I, it, like with any other job, the most important skills you have are the ones that get you in the door, right? Like you're on time, you're reliable, you're punctual. Cause many, many, many makeup artists, like in many creative fields don't have the soft skills. You know, there's a lot of talented people who don't have a work ethic, you know? Yeah, that work ethic thing, it really comes in handy, right? It, yes, absolutely. And you can learn any skill. You can learn to draw, you can learn to dance, you can learn to do makeup. But if you don't have these, like we said, soft skills, um, there's nowhere to direct that talent. I think that carries carries true over all, all jobs and everything. Yep, I agree with you. Right. Um, what's your typical work day or work week look like? So the last, this year in particular, like January and February, I did almost nothing. So I went for long walks. It was just a really strange, slow start of the year. And we think this is still pandemic fallout. Like everybody last year, I was so busy. I didn't know what to do with myself. And this year it's just a little quieter because people are like, oh, okay, we don't have to rush. We can take our time. We can plan these projects. So like last week, um, I did a wedding on a Saturday and then I did a test shoot, which is where, you know, if you want to keep your, your work fresh, you, everyone will donate their time. The, the photographer, the model, the makeup artist, and we make magic, right? No one gets paid, but everybody has this wonderful work. Um, and then I did, what did I do? Oh, I did like admin stuff. So I booked a couple of jobs for this week. So this week I'll be on two separate video shoots. So, to, and that's what a week can look like. And then the week after I have, um, somehow I've become the go-to makeup person for emerging artists coming from Nashville to shoot in wine country. I don't know. Um, so I'll be shooting a music video the following week, but that's the only thing I have on the books. So it can be very like, you know, like this week I'm busier than I know what to do with. And next week I have, you know, two jobs and that's great. If you can deal with the stress of being freelance. Yeah. I can imagine that having not a regular income can be tricky. It can be tricky. Um, if you plan accordingly, you know, you'll be all right. But I think that everyone who does freelance, every reasonable person lives with the fear, like today's the day that the phone stops ringing. You know, this yeah. is the week I never get another job. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I mean, it has yet to happen, but you know. Yeah. So speaking of that, how do you find work as a makeup artist? So as a makeup artist, it's primarily word of mouth. I mean, there are people who have a large online presence and that that is another way to monetize their skill and their presence. You know, um, this is really like my get off my lawn, you kids moment. You know, there's beauty influencers, but they are not makeup artists and they can monetize their interest, their hobby, their skill. And that's great. You know, and they, they will get found on social media. Um, everyone else who works in makeup for the most part, it's word of mouth. It's by reputation, um, which is why it can take so long to build up any type of, you know, career momentum. And do you have a website? I do have a website. It's um, LeeStewartMakeup.com. And everything I've worked on, you know, all, all my career highlights are, are up there. That's awesome. And what about a rep? I work with a few different agencies. Um, my very first agent I got, I took a brief California timeout and I went back to Chicago and I, um, a boyfriend of mine is the most published supermodel you've never heard of. And we stayed friends over the years and I reached out to him and I was like, okay, I need an agent. I have no connections here. And he was like, oh, go see David at 10 management. And I went to see David at because, oh, he said, He's the only person I like. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I went to see David. Um, well, actually, I called David first. 
Um, and he was like, well, pop in today. And that day, like, you don't want to let these opportunities slip by. And so even though it was pouring rain, even though I had no makeup on my face, even though I had no book to show him, I was wearing overalls. Um, I went to his office soaking wet and I was like, well, I can't bring this guy nothing. So I brought him a candy bar. And um, cause he, he was across the street from world plus market or something. And so I walked in and he was like, um, thanks for the candy bar. I really need to see your book. And then later that night he was like, I just had um, an artist cancel. Can you be at Groupon tomorrow morning? And I was like, yeah. And that's how I was signed to that agency. Sort of the magic of the industry we work in. Yeah. Um, There's a lot to be then, said in chocolate, right? <laughs> right. I, I'm highly motivated by snacks. It's yeah. my currency. So um and our, our, we we still have a relationship. He, you know, still sends me on, we call them go sees. He still refers people to me. Um, and I'm currently represented by Look Artists in San Francisco here. Um, and then there's a few other people I work with, you know. And as you work, the more you work, the more you meet people, you know, people hear your name and, and they call you. Awesome. Um do you need to do your own marketing to get work? It's not really like the work that I want. You can't market for, you know, it, there, there's not really, it's not like you get on LinkedIn and, it, you know, and it, like LinkedIn isn't even like an appropriate platform for, for makeup artists. Cause what, what we do is all visual for any creative, right? Like what you do is primarily visual. So there it doesn't really exist yet a really great platform to show. I mean, there's one, it's called Production Hub, which is really useful. But that's that's really all you have. You know, you have your social media, you have your website, and you have the very few um, online platforms that cater to generally creatives. But in terms of marketing, it's like, what what, do you, what would you do? Get a billboard, you know, get a TV yeah. commercial. Like, there, it's just really, it's very much word of mouth. And it sounds like the best marketing is just showing up to your jobs be and being professional and doing a good job. It, it's true. And it's, <laughs> it's takes time. Like there is a, talk about delayed gratification, you know, choose a creative career and you will learn what that means. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, do you develop the creative vision for your work or is there a collaboration with the client or art director? It really depends on the client or the art director. Like at this point in my career, people know what I do. They know what my work is and they're like well we want this so we're going to hire lee stewart for it um but i you know there there are times where you know you've got like a really opinionated art director and like with anything you know it's like every time you speak with anyone it's a bit of a job interview right this is who i am this is what i do this is this is how i can help your project this is what i'm going to bring to the table you know and um people are very literal when they look at your work, there's no assumption that there is any versatility and, or that you can do anything other than exactly what is on your website, you know? So there, there can be a lot of like, um, well, I'm looking at your work and it's this, but can you do prom makeup, you know? So there's a, an ongoing conversation really about aesthetics and what you're able to produce. Do you travel for business? I do. I do. I've worked a lot at Fashion Week in New York. Um, I haven't since it um, hasn't been Mercedes, excuse me, Ben's Fashion Week, but, you know, traveled to New York. I was in Miami last year. Um, I found myself in Pebble Beach a couple times, which is so beautiful. Who knew? Um, I didn't. I So, yeah, there's there's been a little bit of travel. Awesome. Do you work with an assistant or is it primarily you're the go-to girl? So I, for the first time in my life, somebody offered me a budget for an assistant. And, you know, you get to a place in your career where everybody, you know, you're like, I couldn't even feel comfortable asking this person to assist me because they're my peer, you right. know? So it's, it's a delicate thing, right? You reach out, you're like, so my linguistic gymnastics that I do with this, because usually you don't need an assistant all day long. You need an assistant for the rush of the morning, which is setting up your day, getting everybody ready. And then for the rest of the day, you just kind of stand around. It's a lot of hurry up and wait, right? Like you hurry, hurry, hurry. And then you spend the rest of the day making sure nobody is shiny. 
So um, you don't really need an assistant for that. So what I've been doing is calling them half days. Um, the few times that I have brought an assistant um, for a full day of work, it's been my daughter. Awesome. And finally, what advice would you give someone who's just starting out? Don't work for free unless everybody else on the job is working for free. Free work does not lead to paid work. Exposure is not currency. Um, and people unwilling to pay for your work don't know people who they can expose you to who will be willing to pay for your work. Um, don't underprice yourself because this is a great way to weed out who your clients are. Um, if you start really low, you're not going to one day be able to charge like a reasonable living wage full day rate. You know, you might get lots of jobs up front, but you'll be, you know, working constantly just to like keep a roof over your head. So set your rates, stick to your rates, uh, be unyielding in making sure that people pay you appropriately. Um, and also test often with people you like. Um, that's the only time you should ever work for no money because you're, you're just, you're showing people what you can do. And, and that is currency. Um, what else? For every person who says that they don't like your work, always keep in mind that you have a style, you bring something to the table that is so unique to you and there's an audience for it. Um, so be vigilant, stay the course and you, you'll, you'll find your people, you'll find your way. All great advice, Lee. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure. Um, have me back anytime. I will. I will. Maybe we can talk about something. Maybe we can talk about something totally makeup specific next time. Oh, we could. We absolutely could. Okay. I could I could tell you Fashion Week stories. I could tell you um the story of how I got my second agent, which is not G-rated. But <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I want to know all about it. Yeah, there's some really colorful stories in this industry, you know. I can it's, imagine. It's well, it's been fun. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here and um, I'll let you know as soon as it's up on, on YouTube. Awesome. Okay. Right yeah. back at you. <laughs> okay. Bye, Bye Jennifer. That was a great conversation with Lee. I found it really fascinating that the things she talked about most in being a, a makeup artist were to be professional <laughs> and to behave that way and to come and do your best work. Um, come on time be easy to work with. All of those things are really important when in pretty much every job. And I found it especially important knowing that um, as a makeup artist, that's kind of how it works too. Um, also that you um, will be known exactly for what you show on your website. I think that's um, that's really interesting um, concept is that people will just kind of think that's all you can do. So make sure if you can do a lot of different things to include a lot of different things in um, when you're showing your work to other people. If you're interested in learning more about Lee Stewart, you can go to leestewartmakeup.com. And if you're interested in um, learning more about The Sewing Room, please visit us at thesewingroomalameda.com. Have a great day.